Welcome to Painting with Carmia. Today I'm going to be working on a simpler painting before I start on a more complicated project. This is just a very little picture of the very naughty cat who is stealing everyone's lunch. I just realized I didn't get rid of this pencil line. Ha 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 There we are. I'm going to be doing um, wet on wet with the whole body in the moment, so I need to get rid of that before, or at least try to minimize it before we keep painting. He is stealing everyone's lunch, and because he is a very naughty cat who everyone worships, of course he will get away with it. <laughs> I love writing about naughty pets because they absolutely take over the household and everyone winds up worshipping them and giving in to their demands. And I find it delightful. You can tell that I grew up with naughty pets by the way I say that, can't you? <laughs> so he is the same kitty who I have painted before and I actually have one of the old paintings here which I'm just standing up out of view of the camera as a reference so that I can try to make his coloring similar. While I do use um, a lot of these color sets and I use a lot of the same base colors, I can't always 100% guarantee my colors will be exactly the same because I don't remember all the time exactly what I do. So I have for a base color probably a little bit of this tone, maybe a little bit of this cream, um, the yellow, maybe that's too yellow, and maybe just this one. And I kind of start blending in some Oh, also I have, actually, I normally use it as a skin tone, but this could work too from the very base of the fur. And then I start adding browns over it and into it, and also like some more pinkish, dark tones, etc. And it's, it's kind of, it's meant to be organic, it's not going to be exactly the same each time. But let's just get started, and we'll just see how it all goes. So, first things first is just going to be to get his fur wet so to speak, <laughs> not actually get his fur wet, that would be very mean. He is a delicate kitty and I think that that might be grounds for calling the RSPCA. Is bathing your cat grounds for calling the R RSPCA? Asking all the cats. The cats would probably say yes. <laughs> My parents' dog certainly thinks that not giving her treats is grounds for calling the RSPCA. Not that she knows what the RSPCA is, but principle of the thing. All right, so let's see how this goes. What I did was I put a little bit of like a blushy pink in the face afterwards while it was still wet because that was able to give it um, just some variations Same with a little tiny bit of like a reddish brown in some areas. And then I add more of the tabby gray later. Um, yes. I feel like I kind of make him a little bit warm at times for the type of cat he is. It's a Li Hua Mao, but honestly, like on painting, I think that adding a few warm colors is nice to keep it from just feeling really, to keep the gray um, overcoat and the stripes from being too intense and having some warm colors underneath is very nice. So that's why I like to do this. The tail will later obviously have so much layering on top, quite frankly, what I do with the initial undercoat doesn't even matter, but we'll just go with this. And we're going to wait a few seconds just for some of this to start drying up a tiny bit. And I have here a sort of like, this type of brown, how does this look? It's kind of orangey, so that may not be what we want. Okay, I think it was probably a very tiny amount of this one that I used, I guess. Oh yes, very tiny amounts of that first to create a sort of blushy effect around the face. Very tiny, because it is has a reddish tinge to it, so I think at this point, that's exactly what I did, yes. That definitely is working. And I'll probably add some more of it in a few places, and then when this is dry, we can add some different gray layers and things to cover over that. But for now, we just need to get these types of effects first. So he is stealing a whole plate, er, uh, a whole bamboo steamer worth of Bowser for himself. Will anyone catch him in time? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so honestly, this is it for now. <laughs> I know, I, I, I always find it so funny to do watercolor and to be doing like one tiny thing and then I just stop and I have to wait till it's dry and I can get back to something and I can keep going. But that's, that's kind of how watercolor goes. Now it's getting late, so I may, won't finish this painting anywhere near finish it, but we can just get the pink in his ears a little bit. Here we are, that's a nice pink for him. And I could maybe do 
his little nose. We don't have too much around the nose. And then that'll be that for now. Okay, so the very last step is the shadow on the bow in Bao Bao's mouth. That's his nickname. His name is Wei Bao, and everyone calls him Bao Bao. Sometimes. That was his baby name. Then he got too big, and they said he is a tremendous dumpling. So, name changed. Okay, so I'm on the very last step. Before, when I tried to do the shadow on the dumpling here, it didn't quite work out, so I just blended it out a bit. And now I'm going to add a little bit of a more defined feel for these little ridges in the dumpling. I just used the um, blue-gray color I already had for shadows. I know it's not really the most appropriate for the balsa, but oh well. I wanted a little bit of color variety from just always being brown, because otherwise I felt like everything just was the same color. Okay, there we are. You know what? That's it. 
this was a very quick little painting. There's no background. It's just meant to be just the character. So I'm done. It was a very fun little painting to work on. It's nice to work sometimes on something. Oh wait, there's one thing I wanted to do. It is nice to work on something a little bit simpler and not spend so much time on a more complicated painting. Uh, I'm going to be doing another more complex painting next. And this was a really fun little diversion. One thing I do want to do with this is actually put it on a um, bag so that I have a new shopping um, bag for my groceries, which is <coughs> very cute and thematic. <laughs> so I think that'll be really fun. So I'm just going to add a little bit of color to his little paws here, and that'll be the very last step, I think. It's a simple painting. There's no need to overwork it with a million shadows. I'm trying to make it super detailed because I feel like as I say, you can really overwork watercolor, so I want to kind of just add a few tiny little extra details, but then be done. So here we are, just a little bit here, and yeah, okay, there we are. <laughs> he is a very naughty boy, and now all of these vases belong to him, every single one. He can probably eat all of them by himself. He shouldn't, but he definitely can, and he probably will. Wait, I did forget the one last detail, which is just a couple of little specks of freckles on his tail area. He has some on the base of his tail down here, and that will be it. Inevitably with a character like this, with um, all of these little tiny details on the fur, it's not feasible with traditional art to make them look consistent each time. There's definitely going to be variation, but I did look at the original painting to try to get it to look at least somewhat similar, and I think I'm pretty happy with it. So here we are, a very naughty kitty. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for joining me with this painting, and I hope you join me again next time. If you liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up and comment and talk to me about painting maybe. And tell me about your naughty pets. I love naughty pet stories. <laughs> okay, until then, bye.